Let's dive in. And obviously, um, you know, we've had a lot of time now to think about yeah. it because uh, he passed. We got news of the passing Friday afternoon. He right. passed Thursday night. Um, Jay, you said something a moment ago yeah. that Jim Brown is the Browns, essentially. Uh, yeah. When you think about it, like, we always talk about the fact that not just in, in Cleveland, people root for the Browns. That's obvious. It's Cleveland. Yeah. But around the country, the reason there are so many Browns fans, there's two reasons why there's a lot of Browns fans that are 60 and older all around the country. Those two reasons are Paul Brown and Jim Brown. You're absolutely That's right. That's it. That is it. That's the list, yeah. right? And my dad was a Browns fan because he loved Paul Brown and he loved Jim Brown. And then when they were gone, you know, he was angry and a lot of people were angry. But the reason there are so many 60 and 70 and 80 year olds in all over the country and all over the world is Paul Brown and Jim Brown. They are to this day, to some degree, Jim Brown is still the face of the franchise. Well, my dad, when I and this is he made this up, obviously, but yeah. when you're a kid, you want to know everything. Mm -hmm. Why are they the Indians? Why are they the Browns? Yeah. And my, my dad's answer, and by the way, my dad loved Paul Brown and Jim Brown. Yeah. Jim Brown was his favorite player all time any sport. Paul Brown was his favorite coach all time any sport. And he said, well, they're the Browns because of Paul Brown and Jim Brown. They're the Browns. Yeah. And I thought, and I thought that was true forever. It made sense. Because he just explained it so succinctly. I'm like, yeah. oh, well, they weren't the Browns before that. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, they made them the Browns. And that really sums it up, Bull. It, That's true. why. It really is. When I've worked yeah. around the country and I've lived in different areas, I've always fell into pockets of Browns fans because yeah. there's a Browns backers bar in just about every major city. I would yes. always find it. Yeah. And when I would go and I would talk to the people, my story is very similar how you're a Bengals fan, okay? The, the stories that I would hear would be, well, God, the Browns were really good when my dad was young, That's and right. that was his favorite team, so <laughs> yeah. I started rooting for the Browns. And right. so, really, Paul Brown was was huge in all of that, yeah. but I think he was the seed. I think the oak tree was Jim. No doubt. I really do. He was – when you look at his stats, and we're going to have this debate later They're as absurd. to whether or not he's the best running back of all time. And obviously – if you, if you just watch the film and you see the, today's backs do so much more in terms of pass catching and everything else, but the apples to apples comparison and the number that I always use for everyone is of all the backs, all the great backs, the mm -hmm. OJ Simpsons, the Emmett Smiths, all of them, only one averaged 100 yards per game, which really is the yardstick for a great game. Mm. He was it. He did it for a career. And as many great backs as we've seen, Walter yeah. Payton, all of these great backs, no one's been able to no. do that. And near the top of all time in terms of yards per carry. I think he's third. Yeah, I mean, he's... Yeah, number three. Over number five three. yards a carry. I, I mean, mean the number, you think about his last... So he played nine years in the NFL, right? Mm -hmm. His last year, his last year, when he retired yeah. went and did the Dirty Dozen, which I love that this movie. This is my favorite stat, by the At, way, where you're going. His last year, he led the league in yards. He led the league in carries. He led the league in touchdowns. I mean, he had 21 so, touchdowns in his see, last year at 29 not only, years so old. Just to show you the dominance. Yeah. You can go back and look at the rushing title every year in the NFL. Yeah. And there are a few exceptions, obviously. Uh, I think the year that... Um, uh, the old Rams running back that went over 2,000. Eric, Eric Dickerson. Dickerson. Eric Dickerson. Dickerson yeah. There are years where you'll find big gaps between one and two. But in, in 1964, his last season, Jim Brown ran for, or 65, or I think it was 65. I think it was 65. I think 65. Right. Yeah. He ran for 1,544 yards in yeah. 14 games. Gale Sayers was second. He had 677 more yards than Gale Sayers. <laughs> he damn near doubled Dale's, uh, Gale Sayers' I numbers. Know. That's just crazy. And that was the, and, and and that was the last time we saw him play. He could have sat out the last five games, and he still might have led. The league, I think probably would have led the league, the league in rushing. He, I'm sure he would have if he missed five games. I, I'm sure, which is just insane. <laughs> yeah. Now, I remember. I think it was '84. Yeah. Maybe you can help me on this McNuggets because I know you'd find a picture of it on mm -hmm. on online somewhere. He announced he was coming back, and he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated in a Raiders jersey. And I thought, oh, uh -oh. my God, is this real? Yeah. <laughs> and 
he really was trying a comeback. Now, it obviously didn't didn't make it. Right, and, right. You know, in the NFL, you're old at 30 at, as a running back. Yeah, he was. And he 50, retired, right? I think, at 31. But yeah. you know, I mean, by then I think he was 47 years old. It was something absurd like oh, yeah, that. That's that's ridiculous. And he was his. There's a you can yeah. find it. There's a picture of Jim Brown on the cover of Sports Illustrated in a Raiders uniform. Yeah. The I, title of that uh, article, by the way, is Jim Brown, a comeback at 47. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. There you go. His his presence and um, what he's done for this game is is unmatched because he's way before my time and. And growing up, when you thought of the Cleveland Browns, you thought of Jim Brown. You know, there are certain in L.A. There in L.A. You, there are certain people in certain organizations that, when you think of that organization, you think of a specific player. You think of the Boston Celtics. My mind, even though before my time, you think of Larry Bird. Right. You think of Magic Johnson. Now that you think of Kobe Bryant. Right. When you think of the Cleveland Browns, because of the um, they haven't had much success, you think of Jim Brown because he is the last person to help them win an NFL championship, even though it was because of the before the merger before the AFL and NFL merger right. in 1970, 1964. He's brought Cleveland their last championship. And this passionate fan base, that's all you hear is Jim Brown and the way people speak about him. That's how, if you haven't met somebody, the way other people talk about them and their experiences and their relationship with them is how you can tell how a person is. And I've heard nothing but great things. You know, Barack Obama sent his condolences to the Brown family and things like that. And just many legends of the game have sent their condolences. So that just shows me he was an amazing person. He's paved the way for people like myself to continue to play this great game. And um, I just uh, feel for his family in this untimely passing. And we kind of felt something was close because at the NFL awards in January or February, February. It was right before the yeah. Super Bowl, Joe Thomas was the first player to be announced into the new class at the, at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And the way it worked was a great from that organization usually comes in now yeah. announced the player. Mm -hmm. And they had Tim Brown announce Joe Thomas. Right. And Jim was Jim Brown was in the audience. Yeah. And I, at that point, I thought, uh-oh. Yeah, they some, something's going on. Yeah, something must be, you know, he must be unable to move up there. Or, yeah. and, and, and he didn't look well. They showed him a couple of times during the ceremony. He did not look well at all. But I interviewed him two, year, two or three years ago. Now, I can't remember. It was a couple of years ago. And I was, even though he moved slowly, anytime you, you saw him move, you could tell he walked with the, with the, with the limp and he yeah. used a cane. But by and large, he was still sharp as a tack. He was telling me details from the championship game, which was, you know, 55 years earlier. Yeah. And he was remembering specifics and things about his childhood, too. And he was just a wealth of inf information. Yeah. And now, a Bull, I feel like, you know, every organization has a walking history book. Yeah, um, I, I think for the for the Browns, we've lost that link to that great history. Yeah. Now that Jim Brown is gone. Well, it's amazing when Boogie was talking about like guys that you think of with teams. Most of those guys have played much more recently than Jim Brown. Right. And just we haven't had that player. I mean, right. there, there's guys that, you know, you think about with the Browns, but not like Jim Brown. Who Jim is the Brown. Bengals guy, by the way? Who is when, when, when you? I for guess the, the, for me, the first guy I think about is Anthony Munoz. Oh, interesting. That's the I first think, guy that I think comes Boomer Esiason. But Boomer too. Just I mean, probably I, played a, you know, a more a, a, a higher more profile position. position. Yeah. But I, I think Munoz was the greatest Bengal ever, so yeah. that's why I pick him. But, you know, but the thing about Jim Brown also, we talk about this with LeBron. Like, it feels like LeBron, if he had gone into any sport, would have been great. Right. Like, if he had concentrated on soccer or baseball, whatever. Mm hmm it's just, it feels like the same thing with Jim Brown, right? Like, Jim Brown was a legendary lacrosse player. He <clears throat> held records in high school basketball. I didn't even know this until recently. I didn't realize he was that good a basketball player in high school. Like, I, I'm sure he was gr He was probably great at anything he did. And it's from, you don't find, like, there's guys who are great at their sport, but it's the rare athletes, the Bo Jackson, the LeBron James, the Jim Brown, Dave Winfield, that are can excel in any sport, it I, seems. I think that's a great point um, because we all remember that guy in, from our high school, yeah. the guy right. from our graduating class, that whatever he tried, yes. he wasn't just good. He was the best player on the team. Right. And one of the things that uh, the Browns sent out on Friday, 32 facts about 32, and I read through them, and I knew a lot of them. There were some that were surprises to me, but the one that really jumped off the page to me because I, I don't even know how you do this. He earned 13 varsity letters. 
Now, if <laughs> you know, he was four years in high school, right? And there's three seasons, right? If if you letter in all four sports or all three um, seasons, right? For four, that gives you 12 varsity letters. He lettered in football, lacrosse, baseball, basketball, and track. So he had to be playing two. He doing played two sports baseball at one and time. track at the same time <laughs> yeah, in the in the spring. <laughs> he played football and lacrosse in the fall. And I remember when I did the interview with him, asking him specifically about what did you do as a kid if not this. And he said, yeah. "Listen, I was so into it. I built a high jump pit in my backyard <laughs> so I could practice." track and field wow. and I had asked him if you had gone into another sport if you had just decided it was going to be baseball there was yeah. no pro lacrosse many consider him the greatest lacrosse player ever yes and when I asked him that in the interview I said what do you say to the fact that some call you the greatest lacrosse player ever thank you <laughs> that's it that's all he said that's the most humblest response uh, ever. And, and, and you <laughs> know what it was like the mic drop response yeah, yeah he didn't he didn't for a second try to say oh you know that's yeah. That's high praise, but there are so many better than me. Wow. When he played, he was the gold standard of the sport. Yeah. And so he said, not only was I playing these sports organized, when I was home, I was practicing these sports. I was practicing all 10 events of the decathlon because he wanted to be an Olympic decathlete, gold medalist. Mm -hmm. So, was, Bull, you're absolutely right. He was just that guy that was gifted with yeah. unbelievable athleticism and really – managed to conquer everything he tried to do in his life and think about it like he's playing at a time where certainly not everybody but a lot of the people voting in these awards there's still some there's still racism he's dealing with <clears throat> the civil rights off the field but even just on the field like there's going to be guys that won't vote for him sure for these certain things especially in certain parts of the country and yet he won like he just won everything going was, away you look at his <laughs> the lists of awards and accomplishments it's just like it's absurd. It really is. Uh, uh, Mikey, you want to do a read quick? Yeah, I wanted we'll one read, and then I've I got to mention something from the 32 Facts About 32. But today's show, and in honor of Jim Brown, everything we talked today, Browns, is brought to us by Lorain County Community College. Your class is your future. You can register now for summer and fall classes. Learn more at lorainccc.edu to learn more. On that list of 32 fun facts they sent out about Jim Brown, Jay, the one that stood out to me the most – he didn't miss a single game yeah. in nine years. That's, that's, I, I guess I just didn't realize the and, pure durability of that. Wow. But. Now, for some of those years, they played 12 yeah. games. Mm -hmm. And some were 14. Some were 14. But, but still, but still to man a, it, led the league in carries, led the league in rushing eight out of his nine years, was first team all pro not, uh, eight of the nine, and second team the one year he wasn't first. To take that kind of abuse on the football field, and Boogie could speak to it, I mean <sighs> – Running backs in today's day and age, their average career is a year and a half, yeah. two years, because they're getting absolutely demolished by defensive linemen. I know it was a little different back in the 60s, but to never miss a game in nine years, that stood out to me more and than anything else. Also, you have to take into then. account, too, how he ran. Yeah. Jim Brown could do one of three things. I remember my dad telling me this, because I'd never seen him play. I just mm -hmm. saw the films. But my dad, I said, Dad, what kind of player was he? And he said, the most versatile player I'd ever seen. And I said, why? And he said, he could run through you. He could run around you. He could run by you. And he usually did all three every series that he touched the ball. It just, it just would rotate. Yeah. He, would, he would size up the competition. And if he thought it was a defensive back that he could drop his shoulder and run over, he would. If it was a linebacker who he felt had a beat on him, yeah. he'd make a miss. And if it was a uh, you know corner or something trying to chase him down, he would just run by him. And it was it was when you watch the old films, the thing yeah. that immediately stands out is his size, his strength, and his speed. Yeah, no doubt. And to your point, Jay, I was I saw this quote earlier, so I just wanted to bring it back up because I want to make sure. John Mackey, who played at Syracuse yeah. after Jim Brown, and you know Jim Brown, like a lot of younger running backs, Ernie Davis, uh, mentored the running backs that came through Syracuse, especially through Syracuse. John Mackey was talking about Jim Brown. I don't know when. Oh, this was in 1999. He said, Jim Brown told me, quote, make sure when anyone tackles you, he remembers how much it hurts. 
Wow. He lived by that philosophy, and I always followed that advice. So, you know, you think of a running back taking the hit from the linebacker or the defensive lineman, and they're the one that's feeling the pain. Jim Brown's philosophy was, you're going to tackle me? It's going to hurt you. And he did run that way. He, <laughs> he was a punishing running back. Yes. I, I was the, the one thing that my dad always used to tell me, too, is that he said after every play, he thought, uh-oh, this is it. He's not going to get up this time. Because he would be so slow, and he would just meander back to the line, and he would hold his legs, and he would limp, and he would walk, and it would take forever. And he said the ball was snapped, and it was like he got hit by lightning. Yeah. Boom, right now. Yeah. And he was gone. You know. But he said it was all kind of like his, his demeanor was slow moving. And you know who does that sometimes, too, is Nick Chubb kind of reminds me of that. Nick can move slowly at times on his way getting up and back to the huddle. But once the ball is snapped, he's all fire. Yeah. And that's the way Jim Brown ran for his nine years. He was, you know, I, we're going to get into so, this later about the greatest of all time. So I won't, I won't go too deeply into it here. But there is no real, I don't know if there's the, a goat argument, except mm -hmm. for maybe Serena, where there's really like no conversation. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's, there's a conversation. Michael Phelps. That's uh, a different, different sport. Yeah, but even since Michael Phelps, his records now are mostly broken. That shows how little I know about swimming. Like, yeah. Mark, I have no Spitz, idea. Mark Spitz at the time was the GOAT. He won seven and one games. Yeah. And then Michael Phelps came along. And you're probably right. I mean, to dominate as many different disciplines, because swimming's got so many different races. Yeah. So Phelps might be in that conversation with Serena. But... For a while, and now it's different, but yeah. it, it, even into the early 80s, that debate was short and sweet. Yeah, right. OJ changed it a little bit, I think, because there were some that thought at the time that o, what OJ was, was doing was better than what Jim yeah. Brown had done. Um, but I, I still think that, you know, he's there's no clear-cut goat. You can, some guy could say, you know, one player, another could say this. But he, if you talk about the greatest football player ever, you know, he's even in that conversation, yeah. not just the greatest running back, but he's really got to be considered because when you look at what he did, even though it was a short for nine years, he was the best at that position unquestionably for his entire career. No fall off at all. Yeah, I mean, we talked about before eight out of his nine years, he led the league in rushing uh, seven out of nine years. He had over a thousand yards again, not a 16 or 17 game yeah. season. 12, 12. Out of 12 or 14, yeah. and he only was under 1,000 yards his rookie season, and then one of the, the year he didn't lead the league in rushing at 900-something yards. He still year. won MVP as a rookie without 1,000 yards. Right. It's amazing. And, and, and he, I mean, he <laughs> was all pro eight out of nine years. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. It's crazy. Uh, you wonder, you know, had he played now. Look at his size, Bull. Look at yeah, that Yeah, I mean, picture. especially for that Boogie, time. Can I you would imagine not want to square it up man. with that? Yeah, I would not want to tackle him. And then, like you mentioned earlier, he was the ultimate triple threat back. To be that size, to be that elusive and can run by you is just terrifying for a defense. You know, nowadays, you get one of the three. You either get a big power back, you know he's going to be right in front of you. You get a shifty back, you know you're going to have to break down and watch the hips. Or you'll get a speed back that can run by you. But it's those backs that can do all three are the ones that are a dime a dozen. And so and rare. Are, they're so rare, and they're, and they're special, man. And they're super special, and it's hard to find. And for him to be that back in the 1960s and not miss a game in nine years is a testament to, and to his durability and the hard work that he put yeah. in in the offseason off along with everything else he had going on and he had to shoulder. It was, he spent most of his uh, post-career in Los Angeles. Was he a presence there at all? I mean, I know he started the yeah. American and was very big for a long time against gang violence. Yeah. And and I know probably before you were born, but in the 80s particularly, and even into the 90s, when gangs were really, really taking control of Los Angeles, he was out front. He would go to these uh, city yeah. streets, and he would speak to these gang members and tell them there's a different way. Yeah. Did, did you ever remember him being a presence or seeing him or any anything like yeah, that? Yeah, because like, I remember last the last show I spoke about the area that I lived in, and that park was... Uh, gang infested. So he actually came to one of our football banquets and, and brought bikes and things for the wow. kids Kids one year. And just me being a little kid, snotty nose, uh, I just didn't understand the importance of I was standing next to a legend wow. at the time. But yes, he came to our banquet. He spoke, uh, brought gifts and things like that. And just to see 
just um, a, like a, a legend and like um, somebody to look up to and like he made it out. Why could why can't I just the, wow. the motivation and things like that. So that's the one encounter I had with him. You know, I was young at the time, but I do remember that happening coming to our sport. That would banquet. leave a mark. Yeah, on a so. young guy. Well, yeah. what, what did he mean personally? Well, to you? I, I mean, I just what he did. Well, first of all, I, the, <laughs> one of my my first memories of Jim Brown is seeing the movie The Dirty Dozen. I right. love that movie. Did you it, know he was a football player playing? Uh, I no? can't remember at the time yeah. if I knew it. I mean, obviously, the movie came out before I was born, but I remember watching. My dad wanted me to watch it when I was a kid. Right. And so I must have been like seven, eight years old. And we, I think the movie came out in fifth. I, I don't even remember exactly what year. 67? 60. So I was going to say 57. Yeah, it was, after, Six, it was after he retired. I, I think it was 67 that the movie came out. And I remember watching it in the late 70s, you know, as a young kid. And I loved it. And what a, I mean, it had an incredible cast. Charles Bronson, Big Lee Marvin, cast. Telly Savalas. And um, he was good at it. He was great. Like, I mean, and you would never scene, know that he was a football player turned actor. No, and for those, I'm sure you young guys, have any of you guys, have you seen it? Mm -mm. Have you guys, any of you guys seen I've it? I've seen it. Dirty Dozen? Watch yeah. it. You got, watch it. It holds I have up. To watch it. Yes, it does. Fifth, seven, whatever years it's later. It's a classic. It's 50 a classic. Fifty something years later. Yeah. I watched it. I don't remember exactly when, but sometime in the last five years. Yeah. It's one of those movies that to this day, if it's on, I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna watch the rest of this movie. Yeah. And one of the best parts is the scene. I won't say what happens exactly, but there's a scene towards the end where he's got to run yes. and yes. drop all the grenades. <laughs> yeah. And you see, and it's like so cool. And you're like, okay. You know, when Tom Cruise runs in his movies, you're like, okay, I'm, yeah, right. you just lost me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> because his running style is so goofy. Yeah, but, but when Jim Brown, in that scene, I remember thinking, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's clear to see now why he was the best at it in the world. It was so cool. And, and then, you know, obviously, you know, players often, uh, these days you're seeing players speak up a little bit. But with the Civil Rights Movement, the Cleveland Summit, with him and Bill Russell and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Muhammad Ali, uh, protesting the Vietnam War and fighting for civil rights. I mean, that had to be so huge to people when you see these guys who put essentially put their careers on the line to say, we got it. Hey, we're having a successful life <clears throat> and we have to do more for our community. Right. When so often people can be selfish, but these guys all said, hey, you know, we got it. We got to do it. And, and that was obviously extremely impactful. It had a big, it had a big uh, impact on society yeah. at that time. And, the, you know, Cleveland is entrenched in a lot of that history. That meeting happened here. Um, you saw Carl Stokes' name on that list, yeah. Muhammad Ali, Lou Alcindor. Like, when these, they were giants at the time, they were their sports, right. their respective sports. And they came together for a bigger and, and common cause. And, obviously, that kind of propelled him as the civil rights leader that we knew him to be later. Um for me, it was, uh, I've never seen, obviously never seen him play. Uh, it was just, I heard stories through my dad. I'll never forget the first time I interviewed him. He was at ESPN. And um, I had no idea that he was an ESPN watcher. The first thing he said to me, I was going to tell him, yeah. Mr. Brown, my dad was a massive fan of yours. You, you were his favorite player. Yeah. I couldn't even get that out of my mouth. And he said, and he, he talked so low and almost yeah. in a whisper. And he just said, young man, I want to thank you for representing Cleveland the way you do. Oh, that's cool. And I was yeah. just frozen. I couldn't even, I didn't yeah. even get out of my mouth that, oh, you were my dad's favorite player. Yeah. So we did the interview, cordial goodbyes. I met him sometime later. And I said, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to make sure I tell him this time. Because my dad asked me when I interviewed him. My dad was still alive. He said, did you tell him that I was a big fan of his? I said, Dad, he threw me off my game, and I never got to. But the second time I did, and every time I would see him after that, he would say, how's Dad? Mm. Just He just remembered that, that I had told him that he was uh, a big fan of his. And when I interviewed him a couple of years ago, I told him that my dad had passed. He said he was sorry. Well, I don't know how old he was. I told him my dad was born in 1938. I think Jim was born in 37. I think he was born a little before my father. But for me, it was just that connection. And even though dad was gone, every time I would see him, I would have that connection mm -hmm. where I would be able to tell him a story or two that my dad told me about Jim and those great Browns teams. And I think <laughs> if you go around Cleveland, one of the things that we've really all experienced over the last couple of days 
are people telling stories about Jim Brown, yeah. watching Jim Brown play. Um, we, having never had the luxury of watching him play live, we just have seen the NFL films and everything else, and we know how great he was there. But I, it, it would have been really cool to have watched him for a game or for a season to see well, his total impact. Speaking of that, Jay, literally in the last 90 seconds, the Browns just tweeted out, don't take it yet, Steve, <clears throat> the uh, five best plays of Jim Brown's career. Oh, wow. Which I'm watching it as I obviously am not old enough. You weren't old enough. Boogie, I'm not sure if you've seen these. Do you want to take these full? We'll watch them and I'd we'll love comment to. on them. Yeah, yeah I would love it. to. I've probably right, seen all of them in NFL films that I've watched on Jim Brown. I've seen an incredible amount of his highlights through the years, but I'd love to see what the Browns consider their top five. All right, so this is – I'm going to take it – not this one, Steve. I'm going to switch it, take it live as soon as it goes. These are the five best plays of Jim Brown's career by the Browns. Wow. And they count them down five to one. Yes. All right. And your mics are live, so talk through it. This is everything we talked about in those three. Physical, can make people I mean, it miss. takes a and team it, to bring them down. He just displayed all three attributes right there in that one clip. Shifty. Okay, this is number five. Okay. You have pulling guard play. Shifty, physical. And now he's going to wow. retack. Now he yeah. runs away. Now he's gone. Yeah, now I don't think anybody's yeah. going to keep keep up with him. And those guys both had an angle on they them. Too. They both had an yeah. angle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ran two angles. And this guy's after he already had massive contact at the line of scrimmage right, right, and knocked right. three guys on their feet, off their feet. All right. That's a fullback no dive. That play's supposed to go for three yards. <laughs> you don't understand how tough that is, having no momentum. That's why running backs start off seven, eight yards in the backfield so, yeah. so they can see and have vision. He's right behind the guard. That's incredible. Yeah. It really is. Good job by the Browns for tweeting this out, by the way. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, this is the most wide I've side ever watched sweep. in black and white ever. Yeah. It's like, I love Lucy. Look this, at his vision, too. The elusiveness. Knowing exactly where he has to go. You know the coach and me. Ball security, ball security. Yeah, ball he's security. got it in the wrong hand. <laughs> well, the, ball, first, ball the first two was about power. That one, yeah. he didn't even get touched. Look how different the passing game is now than back in the day. I don't know how much running backs were used as pass catchers no, back not then. Not much. a lot, Bull. No, his last year he had four receiving <laughs> touchdowns, which was, I think, the most of his career. Well, that's oh why it's such a huge deal God. now. Everybody yeah. wants a running back that can give them that right, dynamic right. out of sure. the backfield. All right, here's number one. Oh, this is a downfield pass. Oh, okay. So he caught it like 10 yards in the back. One guy touched him. Two, two. No way. Three. No. The distance. Do you know how demoralizing that must be for the defense? <laughs> oh, I'm just imagining me out there chasing. And did not get caught wow. either. Snow on the sidelines. Yeah, oh, that's pretty cool. You just stretch afterward. Okay, yeah. That's wow. yeah. Thanks to the Browns for tweeting that out. Wow. I think yeah. I hope I wow. hope that's well shared and well viewed by folks that didn't see him. Because the one thing that we all have it in us. You've said before. I, yeah. I don't know what your line was, but anything before blah 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 in sports yeah. doesn't count. I don't know what your line well, was. Well, I mean, it, it depends on the sport. Yeah, I, I basically ignore anything that happened before integration in a sport. Right. Like, those okay, Babe Ruth was great, but he did it all against yeah. white guys. Yeah, right. You know? Exactly. I, I need if there's no diversity in your sport. Right. Because of and that's racism, fair. And I, I, but you know what? The one thing about about that is yeah. we all tend to be like we remember our eras. Right. And I, I love listening to young guys debate <laughs> like the goats. And they're like, I, I'll always interrupt and say, guys, those might be the goats of the last decade. But you do realize that sports started before 2010. But in their minds, they didn't. Right. Because sure. they weren't yeah. watching that. That's, that's sure. the thing I always like to say, like when people bring up the golden basketball, it always starts with Michael Jordan. Yeah. And I'll say, in my mind, it's Kobe because with my eyes, right. that's who I see. And I feel like I would be lying if I said it's Michael Jordan. I never went back and watched But you play. preface it yeah. properly. You yeah. say, for me. Because yeah. you've said that on the show before. Yeah. You're like, look, I know there were a lot of greats before them. But there will be – so even the Michael argument, mm -hmm. when I would have that argument as a young guy in my, you know, in, in 1995, 1996, yeah. my dad and his buddies would hear that and they would look and say, isn't that cute? Yeah. Kid doesn't even know about Wilt Chamberlain. Right. You know, or whatever. Yeah, you know? or Bill Russell. So there are errors, but the one thing that I will say about Jim Brown, because it is really hard, like even the game of basketball, when they're doing these set passes, yeah, and, you yeah, know, the yeah. chess right. passes yeah. and all of that, it was a different sport. 
But football, by and large, hasn't changed a ton in, in philosophy. Granted, it's a passing league now. It was once a running league. Yeah. But the, the running concepts are, are similar. And when you watch that clip, that's great today. That's great 1962. Yeah. That's just greatness. And it does transfer. It really does. I mean, I do, I do think that the talent, uh, the, I, I think Jim Brown played in an era where he was just head and shoulders more talented than a lot of the other players mm-hmm. in the league. And top to bottom, there's more talent now. However, I do think Jim Brown would have translated in any era as a great player. I believe that. I do, too. Uh, whereas I'm not so sure about some of these, like, quarterbacks from the 50s yeah. and 60s. Would they have translated? Yeah. But a guy who's a great back in those days when, you know, because playing quarterback in those days was so different. But running back, yeah, I mean, it's different now. But in a, in a way, it's, it's easier being a running back yeah. now than it was then. Right. As opposed to being a quarterback now, it's just it's so much more responsibility. Yeah, back then, the, the game plan was to run the ball. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, only, you can mix in the, the pass to keep them honest. Right. But today, it's the other way around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You pass the ball, and to keep them honest, you mix in a few runs. Yeah. Cool. And the, the sport has definitely changed. But I believe that if you could time shift Jim Brown to a 24-year-old this year and put yeah. him in the NFL, I think he'd lead the league in rushing. I do. I think he'd be that good. He's Derrick Henry's size, yeah. just for people out there to put in comparison. But faster. Yeah, he ran faster, but he's listed at essentially the same size as Derrick Henry. Right. So it's not like we're talking about he's a 6'5 center. He's as tall as Derrick Henry? 6'3", well, six, 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 250. And Derek, Derek's, Derek's, I think, in Derrick 6'4"? 6'4", so yeah. yeah like so I mean, essentially they're close. the they're same essentially size. Man, I didn't realize they were only but, an inch apart. You know, and too, you could tell when he's standing there in the uniform, too. Like, now, you're right. A lot yeah. of these guys went home in January, and they worked at the drugstore. Yeah. You know, for eight months. Right. Uh, and the training regimens were nowhere near what they are now. They, you know, the teams didn't right. have these huge workout facilities. They didn't meet in May. They didn't have all these mini camps and all of that. You said goodbye, probably with a pack of smokes in your car, and drove your right. car back to Kansas City, and you took a job as a substitute teacher for the, you know, for yeah. part of the year. But he was ahead of his time. I he mean, was. There's no doubt about it. But I think, I think there are some, not a lot, but I think there are some players in the 60s and the 50s, that would have translated in any era. And to me, he's probably number one of all sports. Yeah, yeah definitely. For because me. do you know how hard it is when a team knows you're running? Because that's all you can do is run the ball, and you're still dominant. So that's why, to me, if he was playing in the, today's game, he would be an all-pro. And yeah. like we said, he has all three phases. He can run away from you, he can run through you, and he can make you miss, which would translate in today's game where yeah. we're playing in so much more open field space. He will be. He's the blueprint of what you look for in a running yeah, back. Yeah, he's the chief. Back yeah. then in the '60s, right now in 2023. Right. Not to which, mention the toughness of never yeah. missing a game, the intelligence, the vision. I mean, he just he really had it all. You mentioned the toughness. Just imagine with all the sports regiment regiments and the sports medicine, how much has improved since yeah, then. Yeah, right. That's so true. for him to be able to do that and not miss a game That's true. in the '60s, just yeah. imagine. I know. Yeah, right, they right. have a lot more just, things yeah. now to <laughs> keep you. Healthy and, and to make you better when yeah. you're when yeah, you're not so. and to get you back there out on the field. The one thing that is impressive to me too is um, my dad used to tell me how he said imagine that you're you're the, the star of the game every game and the team that you were playing <laughs> spent six days trying to figure out mm-hmm. how to stop you yep. and they still couldn't. Right. He was the focal point of every defensive game plan in every game he ever played in. College yeah, he Emperor. still averaged 100 yards. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, he averaged over 100 yards per game in seven of his nine seasons, which is and obviously for his career. For his career, he but averaged he, over. But, he, but even in an individual right. season basis, seven of nine years, he averaged over 100 that'll, yards. That'll it's absolutely insane. Done, yeah. I know we have, um, we have Leroy coming up in a couple of minutes. Is he on yet? He is. Let me do an ad read. We'll bring him in. If, okay. If no one else has anything to add. Nope. Yeah. I was. I was just going to say. You know, we haven't yet talked to what he meant to Cleveland. We can save that for because I'd like to get to Leroy if he's here. 